Hi everybody, welcome again to Uncle Ty for Christ. Today, Sunday, uh, March 27th. This is not out of our devotional today, guys. Um, if anybody watched today's devotional, I mentioned that I was going to be recording a separate video today. Uh, I still don't know what I'm going to title this yet. Uh, God will place it loud and clear on my heart when I'm done going over these scriptures and delivering the message He wants me to give. Uh, today in church, I heard a verse that's uh, pretty pretty famous, or not famous, I'm sorry, it's just <laughs> God is famous. It's, it's a popular verse. Uh, a lot of people have heard it before, especially here these past couple of years with what's going on in this nation and around the world. And uh, I'll, I'll get to that in a second. But uh, uh, my brother Dave at church, uh, he, he read this. And just the way he read it, and I already knew what he's going to read as soon as he said the verse in the scriptures. The scriptures, um, God put me in a place today at church. I was by myself. I was the only one in that in that sanctuary, uh, Pastor Gary, he delivered a, a powerful message. I'm sure, guys, if I'm being honest, I really did not hear much of what he had to say today. God was just speaking loud and clearly to me about uh, what's going on around me in my own life and the lives around me. Uh, people that are, you know, asking why God, what's God waiting on? Why isn't God answering my prayers? This and that, blah, blah, blah. I get it. I get it now. Um, and we've heard these before, guys, but it just came so clear to me today. And this is how you grow. When you surrender to God, he starts speaking to you. Take notes. I made, I took notes today during Pastor Gary's uh, teaching. And uh, half of them were from him. Half were from directly from the Lord. And I, I spoke with my sister, Lynn. And I said, I can't explain it. But I got to go home and meditate on what the Lord's been saying to me this morning. So here it is, guys. Um, you know, we all pray to God. And I'm going to say, I'm going to take a guess that at least... 75 to 80 percent of our prayers to God are when we need or want something and that could be low that could really be low I know myself personally my prayer life I've changed it to where it's about 75 percent of giving him praise and glory um yeah I still ask for things I still I still have needs and wants but uh I, I try to make the majority of my prayer life uh in honor and glory glorifying God you know praising him but this, I want to read this scripture here first to start off and just write these down. Go back and read whatever translation or version you like, whatever speaks to you. But all of us have said this at one point to some extent or another. Maybe not exactly talking about killers or people, but it could be a situation in your life, a circumstance. So take this, apply this to yourself, your personal situation you are going through right now. And ask yourself, have, have I not asked God this almost word for word? And this is Psalm 71, verses 12 through 16. And I took this out of the passion because I just like the way it I just like the way it's read. And the word of God says, Oh God, stay close to me. Don't just watch from a distance. Hurry to help me, my God. Cover these accusers of mine with shame and failure. Destroy them all, for they only want to kill me. No matter what, no matter what, I'll trust in you to help me. Nothing will stop me from praising you to magnify your glory. I couldn't begin to count the times you've been there for me. With the skill of a poet, I'll never run out of things to say about how you faithfully kept me from danger. Beautiful, right? Pause this and go back and read that again yourself and say, okay, that's a beautiful verse. Okay, what God spoke to me today is like praise and worship are fine. You can praise and worship him all day long, all day long. And if you're praying and you have not confessed and repented of what you're carrying around, He's going to turn a deaf ear to you. And these following scriptures are going to back that up. They're going to confirm it. Take it for what you want, guys. This is right out of the word of God. This is not from me. And the verse I was talking about earlier that my brother Dave opened up with uh, when we had our, our prayer this morning, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. This is out of the New King James Version. And the word of God says, and Dave spoke about this, this big I forget what he called it, the biggest little word in the Bible or something like that. If, I-F, if. And this is what the word said. If, this is God speaking now. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Turning from your wicked ways is repenting, guys. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. We'll read that again real slow. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face 
and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. I hope this is speaking to somebody right now. I have a feeling somebody is uh, understanding exactly the message God has given me. We keep uh, we keep saying we're praying and we're praying. I think we got too many people. We got too many non uh, repentant prayers out there. People that are praying that have not truly confessed and repented. I'm going to call them what it is. Those are empty prayers. They're they're to me to me and, and you can argue this with me or not. I'm just saying what God's putting on me right now. Those are those are worthless prayers. If I'm sitting here harboring sin and unconfession and have not repented and I'm praying and asking God, that's just, that's just nonsense. That just, that just makes no sense. That makes no sense. Um, there's so many life situations that you can relate to that. He'll, he'll put one on me here soon. I know he will. It's just the way he is. It's, uh, yeah, there you go. He always does sports. It's like trying to, you know, trying to walk up to the plate in baseball and get a home run, but you don't have a bat. It's not going to happen. It's impossible. You're not going to get a home run without a bat. So uh, <laughs> just picture some of these things he tells you guys. And I'm going to keep going on with this. Um, this is Isaiah 59. This is a verse he threw on me today. Isaiah 59, verses 1 through 2, I believe. I'm going to read two, two versions. I'm going to read the New King James and also the message. In the New King James, the Word of God says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, nor his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated you from God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. Guys, take that verse, make it personal. Make that personal. The Bible is personal. It's the most personable love story there is. Put yourself in every situation in the Bible. Put yourself in these verses, guys. Let the Lord talk to you. Let him convict you. He does not want to punish you. He does not want to condemn you. He wants to convict and correct his word says that. Jesus already came here to, to, to cover for all our sins. We, we're already forgiven. I don't know if a lot of people will disagree with this, that, but nothing I can find says that we're to ask God for forgiveness. I, I truly believe this, guys. Nothing I can find in Scripture, in the word of God, says that we are to ask God for forgiveness. There's the Lord's Prayer, but we call it that. And Jesus said, pray like this. He never said, make sure you ask dad for forgiveness. Because guess what? Jesus did that for us. Jesus commanded the father. He said, father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And I truly believe that was our forgiveness for everybody that would receive Jesus Christ. But um, here, let me get back in line here, guys. But uh, here's the, uh, this is the message, the message translation. We long for light, but sink into darkness. That's the title of it. Look, listen, God's arm is not amputated. He can still save. God's ears are not stopped up. He can still hear. There's nothing wrong with God. The wrong is in you. Your wrong-headed lives caused the split between you and God. Your sins got between you so that he does not hear. Guys, this is some powerful stuff right here. Um, Back to what I was saying about forgiveness and confession. There's all kinds of scriptures that tells us that we need to confess. Confess daily. Confess before you pray. I, I, uh, a personal situation for me every morning. I, I start my day every morning with communion. And I ask the God, I ask God to search my heart. Search my heart, God, and reveal the things in me that gotta go. Because I am not gonna take communion with this stuff on my heart. Word of God says you do that, you've already placed condemnation on yourself when you take communion with an unpure heart or an unconfessed heart or an unrepentant heart. So guys, I hope somebody is watching this video right now. I, I know somebody is. Somebody's going to watch this at the right time and wonder why God's not answering your prayers. Go back, write these scriptures down, read on them, pray on them, get alone with God, meditate on them. Confess. Confess to one another. The Word of God says confess your sins to one another. That way you can be healed. You know, if you've got a broken heart, it's probably because you're carrying around some unconfessed sins, guys. Get rid of it. Satan wants you to carry that around all the way to the grave. And if you carry that around, depending on what it is, the situation, and where your heart truly is, you, you may be facing total separation from God for eternity. And that's that's not good. Get rid of that sin. Get rid of that junk. Get rid of that trash right now before you go home. So, guys, uh, praise you. Thank God. You know, glory to God for this word he's given me, this message. Break these scriptures down, please. Go back, watch this video, pause it. I will add them to the, uh, I will add them to the description of this video along with the title, whichever that, whatever that may be. But um, 
yeah, guys, just uh, next time you pray, I would highly encourage you. I, I'm going to start doing it myself, guys. And I'm not just saying this is for you. This is for all of us. We're the body of Christ, every single one of us. So confess. Confess first in prayer. Ask God to search your heart. Reveal all that crap that's got to go. And I said crap. I mean, the Bible says dung, you know, so what's the difference? That's what God's put on me, guys. Um, I just can't. I can't. I can no longer pray feeling dirty. You know, no matter what it be, no matter how small or how big in my mind something may be, if it's not glorifying of God, it's got to go. I need to repent of it, turn, go to the other, other direction, and then ask in prayer, and then believe what I've asked for, and then receive it. So, guys, thank you guys so much. Glory to God. Praise Him. Honor Him. Don't stop praising and glorifying Him. But uh, if you're expecting results from that praise and glory, and nothing's happening, um, I'm, I'm willing to bet that there's something that you have not confessed and gotten rid of. So God bless each and every one of you. Find somebody to do this with, some, find somebody to go through this walk together with, you know, confess it, get rid of it. Get rid of it. Satan, just get rid of it. Just get rid of it. It don't belong. So guys, thank you again for joining me. Um, till tomorrow, or till my next separate message, or whatever these are going to be, I don't know. I just knew I had to get this one out there. So God bless you guys. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your day. I love y'all.